For generations, people known as daredevils have captured the attention and wonder of massive audiences. But why? Do we marvel at stunts because they often shatter our concept of what humans are capable of? Or is it the prospect of death that appeals to some darker side of ourselves? Audiences in the 1820s found out firsthand as America's very first daredevil toured the Northeast, pushing the bounds of what was believed to be possible. As it turned out, he could only defy the odds for so long. This is the story of Sam Patch. It's the early 1800s, and a young man named Sam Patch stood on top of a dam above Pawtucket Falls in Rhode Island, looking down at the water dozens of feet below him. All around the dam, his cotton mill co-workers stared up at him, shielding their eyes from the sun as Patch took a deep breath. A moment later, he was falling through the air, flailing his limbs before crossing his arms across his chest and straightening his legs. With a tremendous splash, he entered the waters of the Blackstone River before surfacing to the cheers of those who witnessed his feet. He wasn't the only one among them who dared to jump off the dam but there was just something about the way Patch performed his jumps. There was an almost artful elegance to them that had spectators glued to the sight of him dropping from great heights at great speeds. His love of jumps began at an early age at the mill as a child laborer. He spun cotton at the mill at Pawtucket Falls and this rushing cascade of water almost beckoned him from the first time he laid eyes on it. During breaks, it was common for young workers to swim in the river and jump from the dam, so Patch developed a penchant for entertainment from the start. Despite being raised in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, he was born in South Reading, Massachusetts. By his early 20s, Patch had designs on starting his own mill, so he relocated to Patterson, New Jersey to do just that. Sadly, his business ventures failed after several attempts, and he was back to working in mills belonging to somebody else although he quickly worked his way up to the position of loom supervisor. During his tenure in Patterson, construction on a brand new bridge began over the Great Falls of the Passaic River that was going to have a maximum height of some 80 feet or 24 meters above the water. As entertainment options of the day were limited, citizens of Patterson turned out every day to watch the bridge being constructed. And in this, Patch saw a big opportunity for himself. On the day a new outdoor park was set to open in September of 1827, Patch left the mill, stripped down to his underclothes, and made his way onto the bridge. Watchers below suddenly saw a figure appear at the highest point on the bridge and stepped to the ledge. A moment later, he flung himself off it and flailed through the air about 70 feet or 21 meters before positioning himself for impact. With a huge splash, he hit the water feet first and lingered beneath the surface to create suspense among the crowd of nearly 10,000. When he finally came up for air, the crowd stood and cheered the feat they just witnessed. He made the jump a few more times in 1828, and by now, Patch had become a local celebrity. Suddenly, an unknown mill worker had become America's very first daredevil. He traveled to Hoboken, New Jersey to jump off the top mast of a ship in 1828 and then took on the Little Falls of the Passaic River on July 4th, 1829, which was his last jump in New Jersey. With a craving for a bigger challenge that would bring him bigger crowds, Patch crossed the state border into New York and made his way to Niagara Falls. If you're unfamiliar, three different waterfalls make up Niagara Falls on the Niagara River, separating Ontario, Canada from New York State. While it's not officially one of the wonders of the world, it's often referred to as an honorable mention. The falls boast the highest flow rate of any waterfalls in North America, and the Horseshoe Falls are about 187 feet or 57 meters high. In October 1829, Patch planned to make a leap as part of a day of festivities that included sending a ship, yes, a ship, over the falls. Patch arrived late the night before his scheduled jump and didn't feel comfortable accomplishing the feat without having sufficient time to inspect the area. His planned jump would take place on Goat Island, a small spot of land between the Horseshoe Falls and American Falls, where a platform was built for him to leap from. 
While there were certainly greater heights at the falls, the extremely rocky bottom pool limited his options, so the jump would be around 80 feet, or 24 meters. Despite rain that came into the region, and the workmen damaging the ladder patch would need to use to reach the platform, the jump went on as planned. Just like he had done in his New Jersey jumps, Patch stepped to the ledge and shouted out his catchphrase, which was, some things can be done as well as others, and threw himself off the platform. As always, he built suspense by flailing through the air before straightening his body at the last moment and plunging into the pool below. It was yet another successful jump, but Patch yearned for more. He quickly announced that he'd make another jump at Niagara Falls on October 17th that would be another 50 feet or 15 meters higher than the previous one. In sailing from Buffalo, New York to Niagara Falls that day for the jump, he entertained passengers on the boat by jumping from the ship's forearm. While on the boat, however, Patch loaded up on liquid courage. He was known to have a bit of a drinking problem, which was a crucial ingredient in his ability to find the nerve to make such jumps. After he arrived at Niagara Falls and waited out yet another rainstorm, Patch made his way up to the platform and pulled off another improbable yet successful jump. Feeling like he had conquered Niagara Falls, he set his sights on another waterfall in the region. In nearby Rochester, New York was the Genesee River that flowed to High Falls in a busy industrial area of downtown. On November 6th, in front of a crowd of around 8,000 people, Patch performed his usual routine, but this time he added a new flair to his jump. With him, on a ledge he was jumping from, was a bear cub that he was keeping as a pet. Before his own leap, he picked up the bear cub and tossed him into the river below, a drop of about 94 feet, or 29 meters. Much like Patch was known to do, the poor bear flailed through the air and splashed into the water. After a brief moment under the water, the bear surfaced and swam to the shore, seemingly unharmed. A moment later, Patch shouted his catchphrase and performed a successful jump of his own. It was a spectacle that wowed the crowd, and one he performed again right afterward, but Patch didn't earn nearly as much money as he anticipated. Determined to rake in a little more from the people of Rochester, Patch devoted a healthy sum to advertising a jump a week later, on Friday the 13th. Soon, flyers appeared all over the city and ads ran in the newspapers trumpeting Patch's last jump. Of course, Patch had no intention of retiring from jumping. It was to be his last jump of the year. At least, that was his plan anyway. This final leap of the season was going to be from much higher than his jumps a week earlier. He had a platform built that was 25 feet or 7.6 meters above the falls making the height of his attempt around 125 feet, or 38 meters. When the day came, Patch drew another 8,000 people, and according to their accounts, something about the Yankee Jumper, as he was known, seemed off. Just like all of his jumps, Patch took his position along the ledge of the platform and shouted his catchphrase before leaping out over the falls. As he fell, it seemed to some that he was executing his trademark flail, but as he approached the river below, it was clear that this wasn't just some act. Patch failed to enter the water feet first, and a tremendous smack was heard throughout the area of Brown's Race, which is where the falls are located. Still, the jump thrilled the audience, and they waited for him to surface as they broke out in cheers. Since Patch normally stayed under the water longer than necessary to build more drama into his performance, no one was immediately concerned when he didn't show. But as the seconds ticked by, that began to change. Patch never did surface that day, but as concerned as spectators were, they refused to believe the worst. Many thought this was just a new flavor to his act and believed he was hiding out in a cave near the base of High Falls. Some believed he swam downstream and slipped away without being noticed and went into hiding. If this was the case, what a story it would be when he re-emerged the following year to continue his death-defying jumps. The truth of what happened to Patch indeed wouldn't be known until the following spring, but it wasn't at the top of a waterfall where he reappeared. Instead, Patch's body was found frozen in a block of ice in the Charlotte area of Lake Ontario. His body was recovered in a painstaking process of chipping away at the ice, and afterward, an autopsy was performed, 
The cause of the daredevil's death was determined to be a sudden change in temperature from the air to the water. Rochester, New York generally experiences frigid temperatures even in early to mid-November, and the water of the Genesee River likely shocked Patch's system, causing his blood vessels to rupture on impact. The angle of his landing didn't help much either. Rumors swirled that Patch perhaps indulged in too much alcohol before this particular jump, which caused him to misalign himself before hitting the water. At such a height, hitting the water at a poor angle and position would be like landing on concrete, hence why such a loud sound was heard when he hit the pool below the falls. Despite having only spent a week or so in Rochester, America's very first daredevil is buried in the Charlotte Cemetery, not far from where his body was discovered. Thank you for joining me for another trip through the past. If you enjoyed the story, please consider leaving a like or even subscribing to the channel. It really helps, and I've got so much more planned for you. And hopefully I'll see you back here for more chilling history.